All right. Thank you very much for inviting me today. So uh, as, uh, uh, as Wayne mentioned, my name's Mike Stebbins. I'm with the White House, uh, and uh, I'm here to help. So the... <laughs> <laughs> sure, right. <laughs> I do. <Okay>. So <laughs> I'd be here all the week. So <laughs> I bet you say that to all the publishers. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's actually a couple selected I don't say that to. <laughs> they know who they are. So the... <laughs> so, uh, it, if I hope a lot of you were here earlier to see uh, uh, Dave Crotty's uh, presentation earlier, and what, and I'm still not sure from the early slides of his show whether I'm Darth Vader or whether I'm Luke Skywalker, <laughs> but but I can assure you that I'm uh, in the in the minds of many of you and your colleagues that I am Darth Vader, and uh, and I'm really comfortable with that, um, <laughs> and so, um, and so. In walking through this, uh, 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 it'll be helpful to give you just a little bit of background. And I'm going to keep my remarks short because uh, I think uh, probably there's a lot more questions for me uh, that that uh, that we could probably take afterwards. And I, I think that'll be a, a better use of our time than you guys hearing me drone on for for a while about something that I presume a lot of you guys are familiar with. Um, so. Uh, on this first day in office, the president uh, issued a, uh, a memorandum to the heads of agencies on open government and transparency. And that memorandum uh, specifically called for, um, uh, for his administration uh, to uh, disclose information rapidly in forms that the public can readily find and use. And from that point, um, we took, uh, we started working on, um, uh, that was his first day I started in the administration uh, uh, about two months later. Um, the uh, uh, and for your for a little bit of my history, uh, I have a uh, PhD in genetics, uh, and uh, uh, worked at the Nature Publishing Group uh, for uh, about three years uh, as a senior editor at uh, one of their journals, Nature Genetics, before coming down and, and working in the government, uh, and uh, worked on um, and was one of the first science advisors to the, uh, uh, President Obama's 2008 campaign. Uh, and this was an, a subject that came up during that campaign and was some of the material was included in some of our materials that we had produced for um, then Senator Obama. Um, so we started working on this in 2009 almost right away uh, and, uh, and and you saw there were a number of public consultations that we did on this because this was a it turns out that of of even in in the America competes reauthor uh, the America competes act where um, where Congress uh, deemed um, uh, or required OSTP to uh, to work on this issue. We had already been working on it for several years at that point, and uh, and it turns out that it was the most contentious issue in the entire bill, um, and and a lot of that was because of of people lobbying on your behalf uh, and people lobbying on the behalf of of. Um, uh, sorry, you guys can't hear me in the back. Yeah. Really? Speak to Monica. Yeah. Fuck that. <laughs> okay. That is that better? All right. Yeah, it's literally. I was sitting in the back too, and I actually, and I just presume because the speakers are right here, and we can hear them. My apologies. So, um, in 2009, we started working on this, and and it turns out this was one of the most contentious issues that it was were in the was in the America Competes Reauthorization Act, and a lot of that was because of people lobbying on the behalf of of, uh, of publishers and on the behalf of uh, of open access uh, advocates. I think that w that immediately became really sticky, even internally in the White House, and I'm sure most of you don't want to know about how the sausage is made in internally, but uh, um, at least not uh, here, perhaps over a drink. But the, um, but the important point is that we started working on this very early in the administration. And as you saw, in, on February 22nd, John Holdren, the President's Science Advisor, uh, sent a memo out to agencies that required them to take uh, action on, uh, on increasing access to the results of federally funded scientific research. And this is something that uh, uh, that we had actually baked uh, for about, it was pretty much baked the way and looked uh, the way it did for about two years earlier. Uh, and so we wound up and it got refined over that two years. And we were waiting for a number of different uh, things to happen, including an election. Uh, so, but uh, one of the things that things that that most people don't realize is that we were not actually setting out to make to to increase access to publications per se, but to the results of federally funded research that includes publications, but the jujitsu here for uh, for the administration was in, in essence trying to 
get access to the data. And we've been really focused on data. This particular administration thinks about data in, th in, in three separate buckets. One, the first bucket is government-owned data, and you saw that there was an executive order that came out just very recently that requires the um, uh, government-owned data to be machine-readable and, uh, and, and open as the default. That includes scientific data, and, uh, and, some of, and it will also include some of the gray literature that's put out by, uh, by agencies. I would urge you guys to pay very close attention to that and the open data requirements from the memo that, w that OMB put out, it will directly affect you. There's no question about that, not just the, the Holdren memo, because, because uh, government agencies are going to have to take the publications that they own, and, uh, or the public owns, in other words, and put them somewhere in an archive. They're going to have to make them available somehow. And so that's something that's really important and is, is, uh, is affecting not just our discussions on publications, but on data. Again, the part of what we were doing here um, was was trying to increase access to federally funded research. And in doing this, we realized that a lot of the arguments were are, uh, that were going back and forth were on the arbitrary embargoes that were being made uh, um, um, in uh, around publications, whether it be the PubMed Central uh, model of 12 months, or, um, or or people were arguing for six months, some people were arguing for longer. And what we decided was, why don't we go with the um, uh, the one we had the most experience with, which was PubMed Central, uh, and just go with 12 months as a guideline. And then from that point, what we, what we realized is we really needed to stop the conversation uh, um, that was happening around um, um, uh, arbitrary uh, embargo periods. And so what we put into this memo was a requirement that agencies develop um, um, uh, metrics and methodologies for, uh, for petitioning the government to change that up and down. And that should be based on evidence. And so we're going to have an evidence-based system for changing the embargo so we can stop having that particular part of the conversation. And I can ask, er, answer questions about that later. We are actually in the middle of developing a lot of that. For implementing the policy, there are two interagency groups that exist uh, with about 23 agencies involved right now, federal agencies. Um, they, those one group is dealing with publications, one is working on data, and they're all working on, on developing a plan that is due out uh, on, um, which is due to OSTP and OMB on August 22nd. We have not made a, a decision yet on whether we are going to make those plans public because they are draft preliminary plans. And it really depends on what's in them um, and, and how good they are. What we don't want to do is actually s is, is confuse people if, if some of the plans really aren't getting to, uh, aren't satisfying the requirements of the memo. Um, part of the other part of this that was required is, is public consultation. We'd already done two in the development of the initial memo, but to follow up on that, we actually did something kind of extraordinary and unprecedented, and I think a lot of people missed it, uh, unfortunately, which was that we had a public consultation run through the National Academies of Science uh, for 23 federal agencies all at once for publications and data over a four-day period of time. That has actually never been done for a policy before. And so that was something, that an extraordinary step that we, that, we, that we put forward. And in developing the plans further, there will be further public consultations to ensure that we're actually hearing from all equities. So um, the, the next thing that we're doing uh, is uh, actually on June 20th. There's going to be an event at the White House. Um, it's a, 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 um, a series of, uh, of events called Champions of Change uh, that the President launched a number of years ago um, to celebrate people who are making a huge difference uh, in the world, whether that be on things like immigration or on entrepreneurship, and this one's going to be on open science. And so we're going to wind up celebrating a lot of open data and open science that day, and including people who are working and doing extraordinary things in, uh, in making publications available. We think this is an opportunity for in a number of reasons. You'll notice in the memo, and this is something we explicitly did, we obviously acknowledge the value of publishers and that for some reason people thought that was a, some people thought that was controversial, which we thought was bizarre. And then other people thought, hallelujah, they're acknowledging that publishers are valuable in this space, which we thought was also really strange, because this was, we, we thought that was obvious. In fact, we, I kept trying to remove that line because we were stating the obvious, but apparently it wound up being something that was important. So this Champions of Change event is going to be something where we're going to celebrate people who are working in this space. So going forward, though, what we would like to do is continue our conversations with uh, with you guys. Uh, we've had uh, um, publish a, a consortium of publishers, as you've heard, um, this is in the news the last couple of days, uh, um, who have developed course. 
Uh, they did come in and present that to 23 federal agencies, uh, and it was well received by the agencies uh, in, uh, uh, and had a, uh, uh, who had a lot of pointed and, and, so, and somewhat skeptical questions as, as well, which are, I think it was healthy skepticism based on what we've seen. Uh, and, uh, and we're still waiting to see uh, so how some of the holes that have been already identified are going to be filled in by publishers, and we think this is a, but we think this is a great effort. And we've been very encouraging of this consortium of publishers to put their, uh, their ideas out in the public as much as possible uh, and, and really have a dialogue and bring uh, uh, stakeholders like librarians uh, and advocates to the table uh, in this discussion to see how we can really move the ball forward. We uh, at the White House don't believe that, there, that this debate between uh, some of the advocates and publishers uh, uh, on the polar side should really, uh, at the polar ends of, of, of the argument, should really be dictating the course of the argument or the discussion that's been happening. And in reality, there's actually there, there's <coughs> a lot of people thinking smartly, as you heard earlier on uh, the earlier panel, uh, and thoughtfully about how to move forward on increasing access to, to, to publications. Those are the people that we want to continue to have conversations with. So with that, I, I, uh, I'll leave it, and, and hopefully you guys will have lots of good questions for us afterwards. So thank you. <laughs>